Healthy Rebel Radio is sponsored by the Healthy Rebel app. 300 plus secretly healthy, delicious, mouth-watering dessert and treat recipes made with all natural whole food ingredients. Now available for download on the App Store and Google Play. Find out more details at HealthyRebel.com. Welcome to Healthy Rebel Radio and our first edition of Healthy Rebel Shorts, quick reviews of holistic health principles and how to apply them. My name is Dr. David Dyser and I'm a naturopathic doctor in Vancouver, British Columbia. My background is in general naturopathic practice, holistic autoimmune disease management, and integrative cancer care. I'm an executive director on the board of governors at the Boucher Institute of Naturopathic Medicine, the medical director at DemiHealth.com, and the founder of Melatonin Lab, and I run my clinical practice at the Philandia Health Center in Vancouver. Today's topic is potential causes of IBS. Enjoy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Our first Damie Short. I'm excited. Uh, the purpose of these Damie Shorts is just to get through simple uh, medical topics uh, from a holistic perspective. Holistic potential diagnosis, holistic potential treatments that, that may be separate from what you've experienced in the conventional system or what you've been able to find online. Um, just a different way of thinking about things. Today's topic is irritable bowel syndrome, uh, IBS for short, uh, a very frustrating condition, and, and you'd know that if you've been diagnosed with it. The 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 way it's defined normally is some stomach pain lasting for three months or so, uh, with a few different changes in bowel function, whether it be frequency of bowel movements. Um, uh, or, or consistency of bowel movements being changed, and um, usually there is some relief of that pain with bowel movements. Um, it's most commonly a spastic condition, so the pain is from a spasm of the colon, and um, it's incredibly annoying. Now, what's the cause? We still don't have an official, uh, an official documented cause of IBS. But we know that there's motility changes. We know that the bowels are either sped up or slow down. But why is that happening? What's going on? Uh, there is a differential diagnosis list, so there are, there, there are other potentials that could be happening. But the, the, the important thing to note is that the other things that could be happening uh, could also be leading to this change in motility and be the actual cause of irritable bowel syndrome. So uh, officially, if you look at causation, uh, You'll, you'll see that it's mental, emotional, or physical changes leading to motility changes, leading to bowel changes. And um, w- how those physical, mental, and emotional changes are affecting the bowels is, is up for debate, and there's lots of theories. But um, today I'm going to cover some holistic diagnostic techniques, some integrative di- diagnostic techniques and treatment that you might find helpful. Uh, so if you've experienced bowel changes um, or have had a lifelong uh, occurrence of either constipation, diarrhea, uh, abdominal pain, bloating, gas, all of these things, and have been diagnosed with IBS, uh, listen closely because there may be some things here that you haven't haven't tried. So potential causes on a holistic side or on, on an integrative side, we know there can be gut flora changes. So the ratio of your good bacteria in your digestive tract can be altered. We know that stress will alter the ratio. This is uh, not shocking news. Um, And also, uh, not new news. Uh, Stress, uh, junk food will alter your probiotic uh, ratios in the digestive tract, which can then lead to bowel changes. We know that IBS can be related to certain uh, specific food. So whether it's the fact that some food is just pure junk, or whether it's that some food causes gas production, which then alters uh, motility in in one way or another, or causes pain, or whether it be that the immune system will react to certain foods, and everyone is a little different with that respect. If you you look at the the literature on this topic, you'll see that there's no specific foods that have been correlated with IBS, Um, but that's also important because everyone's digestive tract is different. And everyone responds differently to foods. 
we in naturopathic practice we commonly will track IgG or, or delayed hypersensitivity reactions. We know that they can be associated with headaches and joint pain and skin changes and, and also bowel changes. So the fact that we can mount an inflammatory response to food is important, but not always does that inflammatory response translate into symptoms. So some people will have uh, delayed hypersensitivity reactions to certain foods and have no symptoms ever, and that's absolutely fine. This also this this, this makes this uh, type of test very hard to study uh, with large populations. But it's easy to track. You avoid the foods. You see how you do. Uh, and usually symptoms will go away if that is a cause for you. We know that in inflammation, uh, inflammatory responses to foods can also change your gut flora, uh, so uh, which can then, of course, lead to IBS-type symptoms. And finally, we, we have stress. So s stress can not, like I already mentioned, change uh, your gut flora, your, your your good ratio of probiotics. It can also change enzyme production. It can lower certain enzymes. It can raise stomach acid. It can do a ton of different things. So stress can have a major impact on enzyme production, which means that your digestion will be, re will be inhibited. And um, this can then lead to inflammatory responses. It can lead to gas production. It can lead to a host of issues, which can, of course, change motility. Um, so many potential things can be happening in IBS, but there is a larger differential diagnosis list that we can't ignore when we're thinking of what the heck is going on here? Why have I been dealing with this? Um, I'm going to go through some of the things, and if any of these things sound familiar to you, there there is testing available if you seek out an integrative healthcare provider. Uh, the first one on the list is SIBO or small intestine bacterial overgrowth. This is gas production. Uh, because of an overgrowth of certain flora in your small intestine, uh, and this gas production can wreak havoc on your digestive tract. It can change bowel movements, uh, consistency and frequency. It can change uh, pain signaling. It can, can cause significant gas production, which of course is painful. It can cause heartburn. It can cause burping. It can cause... Uh, flatulence that has a smell that has no smell it can cause a whole bunch of different sy symptoms the most common one with SIBO that I see is bloating people who have severe bloating uh, we, we are looking at a potential SIBO diagnosis the test for SIBO is a, is a breath test where you you fast for a certain period of hours and then you consume uh, this is of course guided by a naturopathic physician you consume sugar and then you blow into a, a you breathe into a tube uh, every 20 minutes for a certain number of hours, and then you can see when sugar reaches different parts of your digestive tract, how much gas is produced. If it's if it's hydrogen and methane produced within the first two hours, then my gosh, there's some some significant uh, imbalance happening in the small intestine, uh, and that can cause symptoms. Something that can lead to SIBO is a history of uh, significant antibiotic use. Uh, but we know that antibiotic use is incredibly hard on the digestive tract. I mean, one of the, the major side effect of having antibiotics is bowel changes. Some people never recover. Eventually, they get diagnosed with IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, and, and um, it, it, it's hard to recoup by just going to the drugstore and taking probiotics. There's a very specific treatment that needs to be done to 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 replenish and to make sure that the the the, the probiotics you're taking are sticking to the, the proper places in the colon and then multiplying and and the protocols for multiplying your good gut flora uh, are important to follow post antibiotic use so we've covered SIBO we've covered antibiotics food sensitivity we've spoken about um, we, we put food sensitivity on the list for differential diagnosis because it's of course, not part of the official diagnosis of IBS, but can lead to motility changes. Um, when I when I say food sensitivity, I'm I'm talking about uh, a different concept than celiac disease. Um, I'm, I'm I'm speaking about inflammatory responses to food, and um, it's severe. Uh, most people that I speak to know what food they react to quickly but many people don't understand about delayed hypersensitivity and how changes in bowel function can happen over the course of a few days after consuming a food. Um, this is very common with people who are mono food eaters, people who eat the same food all the time. Uh, eventually the immune system 
can can start to respond to that food. Uh, I see that frequently. Uh, intestinal permeability is another one. Leaky gut, it's most commonly known as um, the, the literature for intestinal permeability is is coming out like wildfire now. It's crazy. Uh, intestinal permeability is basically um, when there are uh, changes in the, the tight junctions in the small intestine where nutrient absorption occurs and we get immune responses to food that hasn't been uh, digested completely or we get we get immune responses to microbes that have have are, are, are overgrown or not supposed to be in the, in the proper area immune changes will will happen at the tight junctions which sets off a cytokine release or a or a, a, a downstream immune reaction um, that can affect the rest of the body it can affect a whole host of tissues um, if, if you've experienced inflammation of any joint before or if you know what it feels like to have your mucous membranes inflamed then you can picture what it's like when the small intestine mucous membrane is, is inflamed and um, and how that can affect the body in general so intestinal permeability is common uh, and then, like I said already, low enzymes, including stomach acid. So stomach acid can very commonly be low, especially, be low, especially in vegans uh, and vegetarians, I see. Over time, the, the body can stop releasing stomach acid at the level that it is it's, it's required to pull large meals apart, uh, specifically protein. But of course, heavy carbs as well. Uh, HCL in the stomach has a, a, plays a major role in, in in heavy carb digestion, so people who are very light eaters and super healthy and and, and um, lead a sort of clean lifestyle, and then they have treat meals and feel terrible and feel like their stomach is incredibly heavy heavy for a long time. Maybe they'll get some acid reflux as well, which can be from low stomach acid with uh, no negative feedback telling the sphincter to close uh, and getting a little bit of regurg, causing some symptoms. This is very commonly a low acid situation, uh, and something to consider. We we do digestive enzyme support for these types of these types of issues, and we have success with it. So this is really the the range. There, there's a few wild cards like uh, history of history of parasites. Um, you know, uh, over over med, over medication over medication or side effects from medication that can cause motility issues. This is a common one as well. Something to work out with your your naturopathic doctor. Um, so th- there's a long list of potential causes of IBS. If if anything on the list that I've mentioned today has not been ruled out for you, and you're still dealing with symptoms and you're 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 tired of patching up the symptoms using these over the counter medications. Um, these are worth looking into. We have we have basic basically we have tests now for every one of these um, from advanced laboratories across North America. So motility changes causing pain. This can be due to gas production. It can be due to an imbalance in your normal flora. It can be due to an inflammatory response. It can be due to, due to low enzymes. It can be due to stress causing any one of these. Um, but if you're still dealing with pain, pain, constipation, or diarrhea, and the treatments are not working for you, something to consider would be investigating these potential causes. Now, what do we do for treatments? Depending on the cause, the treatment will be different, of course. Um, in any one of these causes, it's important, it's important to have the mental, emotional body uh, centered and, and anxiety in a low state, mood in a, in a significantly high state, and because we know that these that, that our thoughts can affect our digestion. So aside from the mental emotional aspect, what about the physical? Now, if it's basically for every one of these, the, the treatment will be different. If it's intestinal permeability, we try to heal tight junctions. If it's food sensitivity, we try to reduce immune response and avoid uh, irritants. If it's imbalance in normal flora, we try to remove that imbalance, whether it be with an antibiotic or with a herb that can help rebalance the normal flora, and then replenish with a ratio that's appropriate for you, uh, and then attempt to maintain that ratio through diet and stress reduction and, and a whole host of things. 
if it's low enzymes, we support those enzymes, but not forever. We support and then track and then try to reduce supplementation because we don't want to be on supplements forever. In all of these cases, a healthy diet is important. It's important to avoid processed meats. It's important to avoid too much red meat. It's important to eat lots of healthy fats and lots of good fibers. Uh, and, and of course, fruits and veggies and, and you know, holistic approach to nutrition. But if if diet isn't proper, if you're eating a lot of fried foods, if you're eating a lot of, of junk or candy or too much sugar or... Um, you know, any sort of, of, of you know, terrible version of any diet, then the treatments, they don't last. You know, it, it's very easy to revert into old motility changes that uh, your digestive tract is used to having. So diet's incredibly important. Stress reduction is important. And then treating the cause, finding out what exactly is going on for you and treating it specifically. That's Healthy Rebel Radio shorts for today. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please subscribe on iTunes, leave us a review, and uh, follow us on social media. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day. Healthy Rebel Radio is presented by the online health and wellness center, DamiHealth.com. Since 2009, Amy Ling has successfully coached thousands of women through her signature program, the Bikini Body Program. Join today to work exclusively with Amy to unveil your greatest yet to be from the inside out. Go to DamiHealth.com for more information. Thank you for listening to Healthy Rebel Radio. Please connect with us on our community pages on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram, all at the handle at DamiHealth. For weekly recipes, articles, and all our episodes straight to your inbox, join our newsletter at DamiHealth.com. You can find all the links discussed in today's episode in the show notes. Thank you for joining us and see you tomorrow.